Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Sheer, your AEC Tech Girl, and I talk about technology for architects and engineers. Today, we're diving into a topic that's close to my heart, which is understanding the differences between learning BIM software like Revit in school versus using it in the real world after you graduate. Now, a bit about my background, I got my Bachelor's of Architecture from Pratt Institute, where I first dipped my toes into Revit during one of our courses. I remember thinking, wow, this is a game changer. But little did I know, the way we use Revit in school was just scratching the surface. Fast forward to my first job as a BIM modeler, and let me tell you, the transition from the academic setting to a professional environment was eye-opening. In this episode, I'm going to share some of the key differences I experienced, along with what you need to know as you prepare to enter the workforce. Whether you're a student just starting out with Revit or a recent graduate about to embark on your professional journey, this video is for you. So let's get into it. Number one is mastering collaboration tools. Things like Revit's work sharing capabilities, BIM 360, or the Autodesk Construction Cloud. Now, when I was in school, I had no idea what it meant to really work with multiple people in the same model. I was just working by myself in a project. I didn't have work sets enabled. I didn't know what work sets really were. And I didn't understand the difference between a central model and a local model. Now, at that time, BIM 360 and ACC wasn't even created yet. So I didn't have to worry about that. But understanding network locations and companies, network drives, how to access the model. Before that, I was just going to the folder location and double clicking on the model to open it. And if, you, if you've worked in work shared models, you know that you shouldn't be doing that because that would open the central model and that would not allow anybody else to work on the model. So I had to learn how to open models through Revit, how to work collaboratively with other people, understanding what work sets are, how they're used not just to collaborate with multiple people, but also how to organize the model. And now, even more than ever, it's important to understand how things are structured in the Autodesk Construction Cloud, how to open models from the Autodesk Construction Cloud, how to publish, and how to manage the versions as well. Number two, understanding industry standards, but not just industry standards, but also your own company standards. Large companies will inevitably have a BIM standards, have templates, project templates that they're working with, family templates, view templates, different things within the project that makes it easy, not just for you to get started, but for everyone to work together because all of the projects will look and feel exactly the same. They'll be organized the same, the views, the families will be named the same, and everything then would work seamlessly no matter which project you jump to because unlike in school where you're just really working on maybe one design project per semester, you might be working on multiple projects at one time, depending on the different stages that they're at. Some projects might end and will go on hold, and then you'll have to jump onto another project really quickly. And standards allow you to easily transition between projects because they're all structured and organized the same way. There's also a lot of industry standards and in how models are created, how families are created, and how they're organized. Being able to read and understand what those standards are, adhere to those standards, and implement those standards in companies that might not have their own BIM standards is really crucial to successfully transitioning between projects and maintaining organization within your own projects. Number three is focus on the practical application. When I was in school, I didn't really understand what pre-made families were, what loadable families were, what view templates were, what libraries were. I basically just made a lot of elements as model in place components. And I cringe thinking about that now because as we know, model in place components should be avoided if they can. But at that time, I was coming from modeling in Rhino where everything was kind of customized to learning how to model in Revit. And because I was the only one using it and I really only used it for one project, there was no sense of the long-term effect of the model 
or having to work with multiple people in that same model. But when working in a firm, you're going to want to be practical in how you create that model using system families, using loadable families, using view templates, using the custom libraries that the company already has where they've already perhaps created a ton of content for you that you can reuse over and over again. You want to understand the long-term effects of having these elements within your model and the success of creating parametric families that can change over time, can be reused for different sizes or even on different projects. Number four, getting comfortable with documentation. Documentation is a crucial part of BIM in the real world and understanding how to create clear, detailed and accurate construction documents is key. When I was working in school, the documentation I made was really simple, not overly complex. There wasn't a lot of annotation to it. And not to mention that I didn't really know what a tag was and to tag elements, everything was a text note that was just placed on the view. I think I may have even placed things on sheets, but when you're working in the real world, a lot of things want to be parametric so that when you change it in one place, changed everywhere. You wanna understand the benefits of using tags rather than using text, understand the benefits of using detail components rather than just using line work and creating call out rather than just drafting view. These are all things that are going to be critical in the success of creating this project that is going to stand the test of time. Number five is staying up to date on software and ensuring that you're always familiar with the latest software updates and features so that you can use the software to the best of its capabilities. When you're in school, you might just be using an educational license or even maybe a light version of the software. When you move to the real world, you wanna make sure that you're up to date. Now. A lot of times this is dictated actually by the project and you might not be able to move versions until the next project comes out, in which case you want to make sure that you research, watch some videos. You can even watch the videos on my channel on the latest updates within Revit so that you know what the latest features are and implement them into your project. This is going to enable you to take advantage of that functionality because these new features are going to make your life easier in the long run. Number six is develop problem solving skills. In a professional environment, you'll need to solve complex issues quickly and independently and be prepared to troubleshoot and think on your feet. The first thing I learned probably when leaving school and becoming a BIM modeler is the art of Googling. This is going to be your best friend because there are so many free resources out there for you to learn from Revit blogs to the Revit forums to even YouTube channels like this one right here. You're going to want to utilize those resources to solve these problems on your own. When you're first starting out, everything is going to be new to you. And to be honest, you're not going to know a lot of what you need to do in Revit, how Revit works, and how to implement it on real world projects. And you aren't going to want to constantly be bothering other people and stopping them from doing their work when you can easily look into it and solve the problem yourself. In my own opinion, trying to solve it yourself is going to help you in the long run because you're gonna understand why Revit works the way it works, why it needs to be solved in this way, and then be able to use those problem solving skills for similar situations in the future. Number seven, embrace time management. Deadlines in the industry are non-negotiable. Practice efficient time management and learn how to prioritize tasks to meet tight deadlines. When I was in school, yeah, of course, we have midterms and we have finals. But when it comes to different circumstances, those can be flexible. I remember in fourth year during finals week, I was working in the woodshop trying to create my physical model of my design. And I did actually work in the woodshop, laser shop, 3D shop at my school. But I made a mistake and I slipped and I got my hand caught in the electric sander, ended up sanding off a lot of the skin on my fingers and I had to go to the hospital. I had to get that wrapped up and taken care of and it was extremely painful and I was put on medication that, you know, helped me with the pain, made me super drowsy and made it really difficult for me to finish my project. Luckily, I explained this to my professor who was completely understanding and essentially gave me an extension to get everything done. 
But in the real world, that does not happen because you have an entire team that is depending on this project getting done. You're not the only person, unlike in school when it's just me, I'm the only one working on this project and if I can't do it, nobody can. In the real world, there's multiple people working on a project. If you're out, they're gonna bring someone else in to uh, fill in for you and you also have consultants that are depending on you, clients that are depending on you, and you need to get it done no matter what. You're gonna have to stay late, you're gonna have to work overtime, unfortunately, but if you're good with your time management skills, you're efficient within the software, you can make sure that you get everything done on time without having to put any overtime to complete that deadline. Number eight, learn about the legal aspects. You really want to get acquainted with legal terminology and different considerations within BIM, including intellectual property rights, data security, and contractual obligations, especially things like the LOD or the level of detail that the model needs to be delivered at. Sometimes you need to deliver an LOD at 600. Sometimes you need to deliver it at 300. Sometimes different elements or categories of the model need to be delivered to different levels of LOD. And it's really important to understand that. And that goes hand in hand with the time management. Because if you only need to deliver your model at an LOD of 300, but you're modeling and spending all that time intricately modeling every little detail to a level of detail of 600, then you're just wasting time because you're over delivering what was required. Number nine, understanding the full project life cycle. Unlike in school where you might only focus on the design in the industry, you'll need to be involved in the entire life cycle of the project from the beginning of schematic design or SD all the way to the end of CD and even beyond. Understanding Revit's capabilities and that it's essentially built to do that where you can start in SDs with very simple generic things like generic walls and then transition those elements and detail them out to add the different layers of the wall as you get into your DD or CD phases is going to help you with understanding at what phase of the project you need to model to what level of detail. And last but not least, number 10, focus on interdisciplinary coordination. In the real world, you will work with professionals from various disciplines. Understanding how to communicate and collaborate effectively with them is crucial. You'll work with different consultants from MEP to structure, architectural, and sometimes you might even have interior design specialist, window specialist, wall specialist, fire rating specialist, and everything in between. You're gonna have to understand which software is best used to collaborate with all these different disciplines, understand what it means to work in a collaborative environment in the cloud, like in the Autodesk Construction Cloud or BIM 360, what it's like to use coordination features like Navisworks, or what it's like to manage a BIM execution plan, which is going to outline how to coordinate with all of these different disciplines on a project level. And there you have it. Those are the 10 key differences between learning BIM software like Revit in school and using it in the real world. Now, transitioning from university to the professional environment can be challenging, but with the right mindset and solid understanding of what to expect, you can hit the ground running and make a smooth transition. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. I'd love to hear about your own experiences with BIM software, whether you're still in school or already working. So drop a comment down below and let's chat. Thanks for watching and remember, stay empowered, stay inspired, and always challenge what is possible.